Well, welcome everyone to the May 2023 meeting of the Cyversity San Francisco Bay Area chapter. And uh, today we're gonna be talking about the partnership that we have with NextGen Cyber, which one is, is one that really intersects on uh, community college pathways. So the uh, leadership team of our chapter um, welcomes you. Uh, MK Palmore, Rolanda Small, Hakeem Mosini, Monique Head, and myself, Olivia Hereford. And here's our contact information. We have a pretty full agenda today. Um, we uh, were scheduled to start with uh, Chris Jellicarai, uh, who has, uh, we're waiting, to, waiting for him to, to join us. But if he doesn't, before I get through this uh, quick intro, uh, we'll move that to the end of our chapter, um, it, <laughs> end of our meeting. and. Uh, uh, proceed with the rest of the agenda. But what we plan to do today was have Chris give you uh, a uh, overview of NextGen and what we're all about. And then we will, um, I'll give you a little bit of the uh, highlights on why community college uh, cybersecurity programs have been effective in preparing cyber talent. And then we'll hear from Steve Booth who championed uh, community college students and programs as a NextGen board member. And the feature of today's meetings will be our panel of cyber professionals who chose community college pathways as a means of pursuing their cybersecurity uh, careers. So I wanna start with the Cyversity mission, and that is to achieve the consistent representation of women, traditionally underrepresented minorities and veterans in the cybersecurity industry through programs designed to diversify, educate, and empower. And I think one of the things we really want to do too is um, you know, start again also with let's go next to um, NextGen's mission. We can go to the next slide. And you'll see the overlap here. The mission at NextGen is increasing diversity in cybersecurity uh, to successfully educate cohorts of underprivileged and underserved students about cyber technologies and address the talent shortage by providing students with professional development, enabling them to pursue careers in cybersecurity. So it's a very obvious overlap there and a perfect reason for this, this, this partnership. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have Chris tell us a little bit more about Cyber, uh, next gen cyber when he when he joins but let's go to the next slide i'd like to go over very quickly chris is on chris oh, is on he is okay very good awesome uh, thanks olivia and thanks uh, everyone um, for having me for this uh, session uh, as olivia talked about kind of presenting the overall mission for next gen right our goal is to kind of create a platform um, to provide uh, candidates to come and get trained in cybersecurity technologies and get certified and also kind of, you know, uh, keep in career improved uh, based on through mentorships and leadership development and things like that. Um, so we have a, a specific areas uh, where we focus in each one of them, like different cybersecurity technology uh, domains, like security operations, site and access management, or um, risk management or privacy and things like that. We provide trainings and cohorts for candidates to be trained on those things. We also have a mentorship program and where we actually do the mentor-mentee matching. And then we wanted to make sure the candidates kind of can continue to network with folks and then get mentored. And even if some questions like, now where should I start, right? Or uh, what are the opportunities should, should I look at? Or where should I focus on my trainings? Like all of those things could actually happen in the mentoring program as well. Um, and then we, we are also in, in the process of actually we'll be developing a leadership development where people who are been in cybersecurity for a while and they wanted to be an aspiring CISO or head of operations and things like that, what does that pathway look like? So that's something we, we will be planning to start soon in that space. Um, I know Stephen Booth and Olivia are part of NextGen as well. I know they'll be touching on the other aspect, which is the grant management, where we partner closely with community colleges and things like that. So our goal is to make sure, put more talents in cybersecurity in the industry and help them find jobs or internships and continue to stay in cyber is our goal. Um, hopefully that helped Olivia, a little bit of context on next gen. Right. And, um, you know, what has, Chris, can you 
can you comment on your, on your thoughts of, about some of our candidates uh, coming from community colleges and, and the ways they've taken advantage of next gen programs? Absolutely. I think you know, we are um, very thankful for you know, how the Bay ICT partnership and even the Cyber City partnership is working out for us because we get candidates because you know, uh, our reach of the programs, uh, you know, sometimes we put in marketings and emails and things like that may not reach to a lot of uh, groups that we intend to. And uh, the Bay ICT and others actually use, become a channel to uh, reach the candidates. Right? But when candidates do uh, join and they take the training, um, they actually go to the full full uh, nine yards in the sense that they get trained and some of the candidates have actually gone placed in, in, in a company. And I see some of them very successful. I think one uh, who's on this call is uh, one of our recruit through the community colleges and you know, hopefully we'll touch on this experience. It's been, it's been a great example. And the other aspect, community colleges also uh, take advantage of our grant program where they actually take certain courses in, uh, offered by the community colleges. And then once they get a certain grade, they apply for the grant. Uh, and then we provide uh, financial support in that context, which is more an incentive for them to stay on and continue and complete the course. Right? So I think that's the main, uh, main area where I've seen the community college students are taking advantage. And the, the, the key thing that I, I've seen over the last year has been the, uh, the, the the success of the training program, but let next gen is fairly new. I mean, what two years? Maybe how long has uh, twenty twenty? Yeah, so it's yeah. Uh, yeah. end of this year will be three. Yeah, so it's yeah. two and a half years. Yeah. So we're in the we're in the in the, in we're seeing now from next gen the move now toward the mentoring programs and now a focus on placement, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think that's one of our calls we did during RSA. We did actually a pledge for all the enterprise organizations, right? Well, one of the things we are seeing is like, you know, even though candidates get trained and with the, we talked at the top management level in each of the organizations and they all have, love our mission and they wanted to acquire early talent into their organizations. But when it gets to the hiring managers, the hiring managers in the organizations are still have their own regular job description. They say, oh, I need three years or one year of experience, right? So some of those early talents don't actually have that luxury. So we, are, we made a pledge during RSA to say, you know what, enterprise organization, give us 1% of your job in cyber to dedicate to early talent. And so we are recruiting organizations to change their minds so that we can place more candidates as well. The other side is like when candidates actually have their resumes and the resumes is not probably uh, not perfect. So we also actually help them in that context to prepare their profiles. And so it's better placed. And then how do we, create a platform to get the openings and the candidates together in a, in a portal. I think that's one thing we are also looking at more. Uh, uh, I'm more focused on that so that we can actually bring the enterprise organizations and the candidates together. Well, one of the things we wanna do before the end of the this uh, webinar is put a link to the uh, NextGen um, website where anyone coming in uh, to that can, can sign up to be a part of, of our of the programs, uh, which includes not only uh, you know uh, uh, career seekers looking for this kind of these kind of programs, but we also uh, want to encourage those of you that are in the field. And I'm particularly thinking about some of our panel who are could be like mere peers to some of our folks to come in and be mentors. So you can sign up at the site to be a mentor, to be a candidate, to take advantage of the programs or a volunteer in other areas as well. So we will add that, add that link to the uh, chat uh, before the end of the uh, webinar. Um, Chris, is there anything else you'd like to, to add? No, I think, you know, um, I, I give us feedback, right? On how it's working for you programs, like, you know, if you've gone through either training or mentorship, or if you're even having like, hey, I'd like to see this part, particular cohort being offered. Uh, just give us any kind of feedback. So we, because we are, as Olivia said, we are fairly new and we continue to learn and improve. Uh, we want to make sure we cater our co uh, cohorts. That's what's uh, what's really in the industry that people are looking for. So you get trained and you better place, right? So uh, feedback is one thing I'll ask for, Olivia. Other than that, I think that there's right. nothing. Great. Well, Chris, thank you for all you do. I know you're very, very busy in your role there at Gilead. I really appreciate you taking a few minutes out to come and introduce us to NextGen. And uh, 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Okay. So um, the next, before we go to uh, Steve, who uh, champions our community college programs at NextGen, um, I'd like to go to share with you some highlights as to why community college career education is, is, has been an effective pathway. Um, the cyber programs at the, at least in the Bay Area community colleges are, are driven by industry certifications. In other words, most of the curriculum, it revolves around preparing uh, students to uh, sit for and qualify for ind industry certifications from uh, CompTIA, AWS, Google, um, Microsoft, Cisco. Uh, so all, all of these, all of our programs, and that's the, the whole um, intent of career education at community colleges is to prepare folk for practical experience, jobs that, that actually need hands-on so that's that's that is I think is one of the key reasons these programs are effective because it, it it prepares students to pursue these 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 certifications and even those that are not even that are not part of our programs because once you get started, you know a lot of you I know don't stop. Um, and then the curriculum is developed and taught by cybersecurity professionals and influencers. For example, at Merritt College, the program is actually taught by former CISOs. And uh, at City College of San Francisco, um, Sam Bone, who is an influencer across the, across the industry, uh, is, uh, a, a, has been a major contributor to our programs and uh, success in other areas, uh, such as competitions and our rankings as far as those competitions. If you're not familiar with Sam Bone, go to uh, samsclass.info and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, in the Bay Area, we have two colleges that have been designated as NAS DHS Centers of Academic Excellence for Cyber Defense Education. That is not an easy designation to achieve. It takes about anywhere from six months to nine months to go through the whole process. Uh, and it basically what it is, is, it looks at the curriculum and determines if indeed folk coming out of these programs can actually add, add to the talent needed for cyber defense, particularly from the perspective of the NASDHS. And uh, finally, our, our colleges put together some pretty good competition teams. Uh, we have, uh, I think it's it, uh, CCSF has an NCL, National Cyber League, power ranking of number three in the country. That means that the comp, we're always in the, the CCSF, and I say we, because I used to work with CCSF, um, um, are the leaders in competitions. We beat out four-year schools on a regular basis. So these are really strong, strong programs. So, and then before we go on into Steve, I wanna say that don't forget that community colleges are almost free. Almost, but again, compared to you know uh, uh, going to a four year where you can you can start your first two years at a community college if you're thinking you want to continue to go on for a four year in cybersecurity or a related degree. So anyway, so Hakeem introduced me to Steve uh, when I was a regional director for uh, ICT uh, at the Bay ICT organization slash Bay Area Community Colleges, which uh, um, Krish mentioned, because that's that was my role when I met Krish. Um, and uh, when Hakeem introduced me, Steve told me a story about how he had just hired a Merritt College student and believed there were more out there like him. And that's what sparked the connection between uh, Bay ICT and uh, NextGen. So Steve, tell us more about uh, why you've become such an advocate for community college cyber students. Yeah, my connection to this was really going backwards, right? So like I, I, the, the person that I had hired out of the merit program, his name is Sho Harris. And he just was a workhorse. I mean, the guy was just getting incredible amounts of work done. So I got to have him as an intern. Then I hired him full-time. Then I got to promote him two or three times. Uh, this was my last job. I was the chief security officer at, at FireEye Mandiant. 
So he ended up becoming like when I left there, he was a mid-level auditor and he was doing all of the third party risk program alone. And this was just somebody that I had hired out of the merit program. And I was like, there's got to be more like that. And then I had an open position, I don't know, maybe a year, year or two later, um, found out about Dante, who's on the panel you guys are going to listen to, who was the captain of the penetration testing team that had just beat out Stanford and Cal Berkeley and Cal Poly. And he was from the CSA, CCSF program. And around that time, Olivia and I were talking, I'm like, there's got to be a lot more like show and Dante here. My part of this, because each one of the different groups involved have a different sort of a focus, like the diversity uh, group tends to be more on how do we get like people of color and women into higher level jobs. The part of of um, of next gen that I'm involved in is trying to get people into their first jobs. Right. So like, how do we get them a good seat at the table and then everything's up to them. Right. And so far, that's working brilliantly. It's actually working really, really well. Um, so the program that we started up, Olivia and I did, which is we pay back community college students for taking cybersecurity classes. And we actually pay them a bit more than the class itself. So the class on average is around 140 bucks. We give them $350 for getting at least a B minus. So we're not like trying to beg people to come into cyber. What we're doing is we're saying, if you're coming in, we want to support that. We want to be able to pay for your next semester of getting in through another round of classes. How do you get through the the um, like through the the rest of the two year degree? And honestly, how do you end up take the classes that'll get you the certification? Because we'll pay for the certification as well. Because the certification is what'll get people a job. So, like um, the simple example is the networking security class they teach to the CCNA. So nobody's going to necessarily get a job because they took a network security class. They will get a job if they have the certification. So that's where we we all tag in. I just think it's awesome that we get to all be connected on this one. So, you know, happy to meet you all. Well, I tell you, one of the things that resonated with me and, and when Steve and I were talking was that um, for most under many, I would say most, but many underserved uh, students have to work. Um, and it's difficult to sometimes make the choice between going to a class or getting that overtime that they need. And uh, our statistics in the community colleges show that um, the retention of students of color uh, is a lot lower than you know, other students for that reason, often for that reason. So when we can do anything to help them persist, that is key. And so I really, I think the next gen uh, support uh, program around uh, grants for completion of, of um, uh, cybersecurity classes and certifications is helping with um, that retention. And I, Steve and, and Krish, these programs, are are making a difference. They really are, and we really, really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Anything else to add, Steve, before we go to our panel? No, I want to hear from the panel. Yeah, I think we all do too. All right. Well, this is definitely uh, the the feature of our of our of our um, webinar today. Um, we have um, two CCSF alum. Uh, one Merit alum and one from Cabrillo. And they all are now enjoying uh, very, very excellent careers. And I'm sure they're still on a, on a trage trajectory. So I wanna start off with a little bit of a disclaimer that any, any of the opinions uh, or statements made here by our panel are solely their own and uh, not uh, in any way related to the organizations that, that they work for. So um, in, in, in alpha, I'm going to go in alphabetical order and ask each of them to take five minutes to um, introduce themselves and, and share a bit about um, their backgrounds before they began their pursuit of a career in cybersecurity. Um, what led to that decision and the choice to enter a um, community college program and uh, what your experience was as a com community college student in those programs and how it helped you get to uh, where you are today. So let's start with, with Dante Alabasto. 
Yes, absolutely. And just first and foremost, thank you, Olivia and Steve, for having me here. Both of um, both of you were, were influential in getting me to where I am today. So I just once again, thank you. Um, my name is Dante Alabastro. I'm a red team lead now at Google. And it's part of my responsibility to secure Mandiant products within Google Cloud. Um, uh, Mandiant, formerly FireEyes, is where I met Steve. Um, and I also just coincidentally work with Show Harris. Uh, I've been able to meet up with him in person. He's a really great guy. Um, so it's just wonderful to have you know that that connection there and, and support community with the with the company I work for now. Um, before I I joined cybersecurity in general, I was actually a ballet dancer for over 15 years. Uh, I danced professionally here in San Francisco. Um, so very different background. Um, after graduating high school, you know, I decided to, to follow a career in ballet. So I actually didn't join any sort of formalized schooling um, until about five years after graduating. So my, my career definitely started a little bit later. Um, you know, while I was dancing, uh, I was also working in a restaurant and, uh, you know, going to school on the weekends or, or taking classes online. So definitely very busy as I first started going in there, which I'm sure a lot of you can, can relate to, but if you feel like you're struggling with that, just, you know, it's all, it's, it's worth it in the end. Uh, people definitely recognize that. Um, I think one of the biggest you know, uh, reasons why I joined a cyber, uh, community college program, first and foremost, really is just affordability. Um, here in San Francisco, it's very expensive to live in. Uh, fortunately, City College of San Francisco offers free tuition to its residents. Uh, if you've lived here at, at any amount of time, if you lived in California for over a year, it, it is free for you. Um, so that was an obvious choice, no risk there in taking classes. Um, for example, I was taking archery for my PE credit. It was just, that, that was an option. Um, so, so that was really fun. Um, but, uh, I really came in for, for computer sciences and just was looking at the list of available classes. One of course was, was network security, which we've talked about, or Olivia talked about a little bit earlier. Um, and the very first class, we just spent about an hour and a half learning how to pick locks. So there's door locks, padlocks, handcuffs, everything. I and mean, we just learned the fundamentals of essentially how to break down the problem um, and break break in essentially and, and what really excited me about that was you know these are things that would typically be seen as maybe illegal or rule breaking um, and then realizing that's what you get to do for your job as a career fully sanctioned uh, was really cool to me um, so I really just started taking every single class that that was offered. And that's kind of what drove me towards the the uh, cybersecurity field. Uh, I, I was still kind of enrolled as a computer science student, um, but just got fully, fully uh, involved with cybersecurity uh, after that point. Um, and, you know, for me, coming from a creative arts background, I really found that it had this wonderful blend of creativity, uh, problem solving and, um, you know, the sciences. And so that was that was always a, a big draw and continues to be a big draw for me. Um, and nothing's really set in stone within this space. So you definitely get to use that that kind of creative side side to find interesting solutions to brand new problems that perhaps no one's ever seen before. Um, and, uh, in regards to my experience in the community college program and how it got me to where I am, um, you know, it was, it was really essential. I, I really had no, uh, formalized experience within the space prior to community college. Um, so it opened a lot of avenues for me, a lot of doors for me. Um, Steve talked about this a little bit earlier in regards to certifications. Um, there are several classes that are available that will help you prepare for your certificate. Um, and although, you know, course uh, experience is good, um, if you don't have prior work experience, it's very difficult to get into the field. And so the certificate is one of those things that shows, yes, I have a fundamental understanding of these concepts. Um, and uh, it will also help you greatly during your interview. Unfortunately, not a lot of the certificates can apply directly to your work. Some of them definitely do, um, but 
uh, fortunately, a lot of them end up being the same types of questions that are asked in your interview. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> so it can it definitely can help out in, in that type of situation. Um, and then the biggest thing for me, which Olivia covered, was the competition. So we had the opportunity to compete with the collegiate penetration testing competition. Um, so I had the opportunity to be a co-captain of uh, the team um, of previous years. And uh, that year we ended up taking first place in the Western Regional Division, uh, beating out Stanford University. And then the year before that, we were able to beat Berkeley um, as well. So that gained us a lot of recognition, um, but more importantly, it gave us a tangible work experience. And so when I came to my role at Fire Eye Mandiant, um, part of my responsibilities at that time as well was to conduct red team assessments against the, the infrastructure. And so, you know, although I was nervous, I, I knew that I had this kind of high intensity experience that I gained through the competitions that allowed me to, you know, kind of drill in and, and do what I've done before in this kind of safe and confined setting uh, against a, a very large cybersecurity company. Um, so that was that was huge. Um, and then another thing that I kind of want to shout out as well is is kind of coming in hand in hand with community college is a lot of the cybersecurity conferences, a lot of the tech conferences offer student price tickets or completely free. Um, and, you know, although you're not really there to buy a new technology, it does allow you the opportunity to make connections with CFOs, with CISOs, with um, other, you know, engineers within that space. And one thing that really has helped me uh, identify which um, direction I wanted to go within the field was having the opportunity to speak to different people um, who are working on different roles within uh, cybersecurity. Um, so that really helped me piece together an understanding of where, which direction I wanted to go within this space. So I found that to be incredibly valuable. Um, and then you also get ingrained with the, the community. So for example, B-Sides San Francisco or whatever local B-Sides is closest to you has a great, you know, community of cybersecurity professionals who I have always found to be very supportive. Um, and so it's just a great space to, to learn from them and, and gain uh, industry connections and friends and, you know, more importantly, just support on your journey throughout the field. So um, I think that's just a brief, uh, brief gist of, of my history. So I'll hand it back to, to Olivia. Very good, Dante. I'm hearing the message here about networking <laughs> that that you really yes. that you really took advantage of. Uh, and uh, again, I think things like B side, where a lot of things where you can actually be a volunteer at B side and take advantage of the whole uh, uh, event is is an opportunity. Um, just to, uh, just one last question for you, Dante. Um, you mentioned that your creative arts background, um, you know, added to um, you know your interest and 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 acclimation to cyber security. Can you can you tell us a little bit more about that? Because a lot of people coming to community colleges are coming in for these programs are coming in with totally non related, um, you know, undergraduate degrees often. So anything you can add to that? Yeah, I think that's one of the special parts about uh, cybersecurity in general is is there's not too many people who come in. Um, with a very clear cybersecurity background. A lot of people have come in either from computer science or various fields who've, who've become drawn to, you know, how exciting and interesting cybersecurity is. So I think having that blend of diverse backgrounds is actually very beneficial. In regards to creative arts, um, unlike uh, direct science or, or math, um, cybersecurity never necessarily has one correct answer. Um, or like, for example, if you're trying to break into a network, there's there's not necessarily one correct way to, to break in. There's not usually a very clear path either. You usually have to jump through many different hoops. And that's kind of where your creativity has to come in. Um, there is a course at City College of San Francisco titled Creative Red Teaming for that very exact reason, um, because you have to try a lot of different things and you have to, to be able to understand that you can spend hours on on one uh, maybe finding and it will will lead to nothing and you have to kind of continue from there. Um, 
so yeah, I feel like that's that's one place that uh, it could be applicable. And then also, <laughs> I know it sounds kind of funny, but working in teams is very similar to you know a very large choreographed dance. Um, so you kind of have, uh, if you think about uh, a run book or a playbook for incident response or for red team engagement, uh, it's very similar to to a rehearsal. And then you know you get to the real thing and. Um, everyone knows what role they're in and everyone knows how to perform. And so um, it was just kind of an interesting tangent that that I was able to apply um, uh, during my time. Great. Thank you so much, Dante. Absolutely. Thanks again. All right. Nina, Nina Baklarova, tell us about your pathway. Thank you very much, Dr. Olivia. Harry Ford. Um, thank you everyone for being here today. It's a pleasure to be part of this panel. And I'm very excited to talk about my community college pathway to the field of cybersecurity. Um, so my name is Nina Bochbarova. I work as a cybersecurity engineer at city and county of San Francisco. In my day-to-day, -day, I'm usually responsible for third-party vendor risk assessments, for PCI compliance, and for patch management, among other tasks. In cybersecurity, um, the field is so broad that there's never a dull moment and <laughs> there's always work to be done, which is, uh, I think, what draws a lot of us into the field. Uh, my journey to the cybersecurity field actually began with taking a network security 101 type of a class at City College of San Francisco back in 2016. And the wonderful professors Richard Wu and Sam Baum, as you already heard about him, were the ones that sparked my interest in the field. Um, these two fantastic people and instructors to whom I owe a lot were um, immeasurable to, to where I am today because without them at City College of San Francisco, I don't think that I would be in the field today. And also same goes to Dr. Olivia Hereford. Um, she was at that time working really hard to make sure that the first cybersecurity apprenticeship cohort at City College uh, was ready to meet with potential employers. And um, during the two years at City College, I was able to take a lot of different classes um, in the cybersecurity field uh, from networking to um, really learning what hackers do um, I also participated in some of the CTFs, and we were a very exciting uh, group of people working to, we were actually learning a lot and then working to compete in these CTFs. Um, so I graduated in 2018, uh, about two years after I began with an associate's degree in network security and became a cybersecurity apprenticeship through the apprentice program at the college for about 18 months with city and county of San Francisco which then turned into my current position. And I, before I actually got involved in the cybersecurity field, I also was a dancer at one point many years ago, but I uh, decided in about 2013 that I wanted to change um, what I wanted to do. Um, I had graduated from University of California, Davis with two undergraduate degrees, but I felt that um, technology was where I wanted to be next. Um, so I completed a coding bootcamp in 2014 and was working towards becoming a software engineer and decided to take some classes at City College. And after graduating from the bootcamp, I just didn't feel like I was prepared enough. So City College gave me that opportunity to hone off my skills. But thanks to another professor there who said, hey, by the way, if you are interested in getting a City College of San Francisco certificate in different fields, feel free to check out some of the other courses. And that's how I found the networking, um, the networking and security courses. And thanks to hard work of many of these wonderful people, professors, um, many of our CCSF classmates had applied to be in this first cybersecurity apprenticeship cohort at college. And I will personally forever be grateful to each and every individual for their passion and dedication to the program and our current successes. I have to say that uh, Nina, refer Nina and I worked together uh, at, with the apprenticeship program very closely. She was often the, uh, the, where I got the best feedback as to how we could support that, that cohort and, uh, and, 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 that's why she calls me Dr. O, we're friends. 
<laughs> anyway, you know, Nina, one of the things that you, you didn't mention that also correlates with something that Dante mentioned is that one of the things I recall when we were working together at, at, at the apprenticeship is that you were out there, you were going to conferences, you were, t you were following everything that Sam had recommended that you go for. Uh, you know, tell us a little bit about that and how that made a difference for you. I think it's extremely important once you decide to go a certain path, certain direction, no matter what it is, uh, to try to find your why and the how will just happen. So I had found my why I wanted to be in the cybersecurity field, and I was very, very excited to learn about all these conferences, go as many places as I could. Um, at that time, there were meetups uh, that were happening at many of the companies around the Bay Area. So literally for a few years, I would get in my car and just drive to Silicon Valley, drive to San Francisco or take bar to San Francisco if I could and go to these different meetups. Even if I didn't know exactly what we were going to be talking about, I was there just to learn and to absorb. Um, also, of course, for the networking, um, I think it's extremely invaluable, um, no matter where you are located, to network with peers, um, what are their classmates, what are their companies that are having maybe some kind of an event, um, sharing, opening doors, uh, because you want that exposure when you're starting in a brand new field. And even now that I've been in the field for a few years, uh, I was just at RSA just for one day because I couldn't take more time off from work. But it is so exciting to be around people that are passionate about the field that we work in, to network, to communicate, also to have fun because our day-to-day -day sometimes is so busy that we sometimes even forget to have fun. So it was fantastic opportunity, even back in college to, um, to have this opportunity and chances to meet so many others. Great, great. Um, can you comment, you know, as in closing, I guess, you know, uh, you, your path was through an apprenticeship program. Okay. Um, feedback on that, because like, we're all looking for feedback and, and, and just as an FYI, that was a very challenging program. And the difficulty I, I would say as I was the program manager was uh, the, getting the linkage to the employers. Okay. Um, but again, that's from my perspective as the program manager, Nina, from your perspective as an apprenticeship, can you comment on that? Certainly. Um, I know how hard it was for you all that were participating or that were trying to put the program together for us. Um, it was very exciting because during my very first network security class, uh, Professor Wu said, hey, by the way, we're working also on this apprenticeship program that was in 2016, and it will take about two years for us to complete it. And that's about the time that I thought that hopefully I'll be graduating from, um, from City College. And that's exactly what happened. Um, so the apprenticeship itself was a fantastic opportunity to get our foot in the door with a company that we interviewed. I actually interviewed at three different places and was able to gain understanding of what they do, how they do it, and what they would like to see from us. And the best part for me personally was the fact that I actually really wanted to work where I ended up working. Um, and it was a fantastic opportunity to meet with the employer for those 18 months to learn what cybersecurity engineers actually do, uh, work along them, and really figure out, is this what I want to do for a long period of time? And that's, it just worked out for me really well. I hope it worked out for the rest of uh, the CCSF students that were part of the apprenticeship. And I just cannot recommend to more than I could already do uh, to take as many of those classes as you can from Sam Baum, uh, Richard Wu, if he still teaches, I hope he does. Um, City College is just a great, great place to start. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and, and as a note of, on apprenticeship programs at, at, uh, at community colleges, there is now a program uh, working on um, how we um, fund employers for apprenticeships and internships, because that's often the reluctance of getting involved is that they eh, so sometimes don't want to take a risk. OK, but if you give them the funding, say we'll pay for the apprentices for the you know, 18 months. So this community colleges are now working on that strategy. All right. So let's now go to Christina Hansen. 
Sorry, I wasn't quite unmuted yet. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. And, you know, this is such a great opportunity. And it's been lovely hearing the other stories. And there's so much overlap for a lot of, of my story that goes with both what Nina and Dante have talked about already. So I'll try not to duplicate too much, but it's just very exciting to hear about it. And hopefully this will spark anybody that's in the audience to to move forward with their with their goals. Um, so I am Chris Hansen. I work currently for App Dynamics, which is a, a business unit of Cisco Systems, and I've um, I've been there for about three and a half years. And my position is uh, Information Security Architect, and I work with our customer trust team. And customer trust is somewhat unique. Uh, we are part of Information Security, um, which is under Engineering, and we are the kind of face of security when it comes to all of our customers. So we do everything from provide documentation, um, whether it's a SOC 2 report or filling out questionnaires, um, all the way to uh, handling vulnerabilities that are reported to us and doing initial um, triage and things with that, to having actual meetings with customers where they just want to talk security. And we come in and we share that information and our knowledge and how it's going to best work for them as a company and a customer. Um, it's just a really exciting place to be because it changes every day. That's one of the things I really love about what I do. Um, my background before tech, um, tech is actually my third career, or information security is my third career. Um, prior to that, when I was uh, initially went to college back in my 20s, I studied recreation and leisure studies, which <laughs> was basically prepared me for a career in municipal recreation. I did a lot of special event planning as well as sports management. So I kind of had a lot of, you know, program management type things that have gone on to serve me really well um, throughout that time. Uh, second career after I kind of, after about 15 years of doing uh, recreation, I started working for a homeowners association which uh, is as exciting as it sounds. <laughs> um, the one that I was at was a nonprofit, which was interesting, but it um, was for a community that I lived in in Alameda, um, North Northern California, and I Bay Area. And basically, um, it was a good opportunity for me because it was a very small company. And I ended up was hired as an architect, actually, as a, a, a architect in the sense of people repairing and enhancing their homes. And that ended up being my same title that I have now, which is nothing related to houses and things like that. But in addition to doing the architecture, painting, things like that, um, approvals for the HOA, I also, as my side gig, was the very technical person in the office. So I became the system administrator. So we had a couple servers, we had, you know, 40 people that were in the office, and I just kept everything going. And it was never my main you know, my main topic, but it was the part of my job that I love doing. And so after 10 years <laughs> of doing that, I really decided that's all I wanted to do. I didn't want to work in, you know, problem solving and dealing with people and um, HOAs are notorious for being difficult and I, they are. So just put it that way, but it was great experience. So um, I decided at that time just to kind of go back to college and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Um, I had taken a couple classes as part of the Peralta system and I noticed in the in the um, catalog that they had a security class that was actually going to be going on at Merit. And so I signed up for that because security was something that we had coming up a lot in the work that I was doing for, for the HOA. And in doing so, I signed up for this class and I get a message from the instructor who is Tim Mather, who is one of the folks teaching there, who said, this is so great, great that you've decided to start a career in security and we need more women. And I'm just really glad you're here. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm taking one class. I didn't, you know, and I didn't realize at the time, this is goofy as, as all, but um, it was actually the first class for this brand new program they had started at Merritt College. And I was actually the second group of people that had gone through. Show was in the class ahead of me. So that was actually hearing about Show and how wonderful he's doing has been really great to hear about as well. And some of the other folks that have been mentioned. Um, but, uh, you know, starting at Merritt was just kind of life changing. It, it really made such a huge difference. Um, as, as folks have discussed here, it is taught by industry professionals, um, CISOs, current CISOs, former CISOs, 
Um, we had guest speakers all the time that were in the industry that could share what they were doing and hear about that. It was just kind of an amazing um, opportunity to learn from those people and to build those connections. And I had to be honest, I the first year I was there, I didn't take that part too seriously. And I, you know, I had a LinkedIn and I was kind of, you know, I had it for my previous job where I had to deal with uh, certain certain oper certain areas of my job. And, you know, when I kind of wholeheartedly jumped in with that, it was so fun. I mean, I just met people. People were so willing to be helpful and to answer questions and um, things like that. So as far as um, Th that was my kind of decision to enter it and it, the experience with the community college and how it helped. Um, there are several things. I think, you know, a couple of things that have already been touched on, you know, meeting industry professionals and really finding out what this is about and kind of having an informed decision of making this a, you know, something that I wanted to do. Um, capture the flag was huge. That was so much fun and it really gave me confidence in a lot of the work and also understanding that security is really about figuring stuff out. It's, you know, I think Dante mentioned that there's not like a, a clear distinction of something that you can learn that you can then take to a job and use, but it's that ability to figure things out and how you think about problems and how you work with others and, and things like that. So that was just a huge part for me. And I really enjoyed that. And it, it was hard because at merit, um, you know, you could still technically, you could still participate after you graduated. And I didn't, but I kept getting asked. It was like, come on, Chris, you want to go be on the, C on the CTF team? And I was like, no, I can't really, but it was fun. Um, anyway, but that's something you can also do after you graduate. So, but NCL was really a, a good time with that. And then I think the, the thing for me personally, that was most, um, life-changing when it came to being at the community college was look finding other opportunities just resources through the community college program for me i ended up learning about a boot camp that i ended up taking uh, which was called transmosis and it was kind of a, a, it was along the lines of the apprenticeship program that was kind of their initial gist so i i was I applied for and was accepted to that program this is while i was at merit and that was great. And I learned a ton and I made some really good connections. And then while I was doing that, they were going to do certifications through SANS. And so the SANS program, um, I decided to look up because I was going to be doing the certification with them. And it was an entry level cert. And I went online and I'm looking at their website and they had a women's academy for cybersecurity that had just started. So I applied for and was accepted into that program as well. And that was kind of the, the one of the other just main life-changing parts of this journey. Um, I was accepted. The Women's Academy basically gave you three classes from SANS and then paid for three certifications based on those classes. And kind of everybody has talked about, you know, when you first get started, if you don't have experience, those certifications really do make a difference that shows you're kind of on the same playing field and that you speak the same language as people that are in this field. And that's that's the part that really helped me um, in doing that. So I think those were kind of the main um, parts of that. But, um, you know, it's a really great program. Um, Merit, I get so excited when I also hear about other successful folks from the program. Um, I think, too, Nina, one of the things you mentioned that I think was also huge um, was meetups. I would go to pretty much every meetup I could find for the first like two years of my employment. Um, and then, and it would be on topics that I had no idea what they were, but I just sit there and kind of through osmosis would learn something. Um, I would take notes, I'd run home and I would then look things up and go, oh, what's that about? You know, what is, what is, I don't know, AI or whatever, you know, this is years ago. So it was still, you know, very new with a lot of the, the things that are out there, but, um, but it was, it was kind of a amazing thing. And also just, building rapport with people and meeting people. Um, one of the things I always heard when I started was that this is a very small um, group of folks that are in security and that you'll meet people that you know, and that happens all the time. Um, you know, I'm in the Bay Area, so obviously this is kind of the hub of where that happens, but um, I definitely meet people. I just went to B-Sides a couple of weeks ago. I did volunteer at B-Sides as a way of giving back. Um, still really enjoy doing that. And, um, you know, it's been kind of, kind of awesome. <laughs> the 
the whole time. Um, well, I think one of the things that's really important that you, you bring up, Chris, is that uh, the resources that are available to these programs, and I want to explain that one of the reasons that they may be, you know, more so at community colleges is that career education uh, in the community colleges is considered workforce development. Yeah. So there are a lot of resources that are thrown into the community colleges around looking at how we deal with some of the workforce needs in the region. So that is, um, thanks, thanks for bringing that up because the, that was, I didn't mention that when I was talking about the community colleges earlier. All right, let's wrap. If we, I need to, we need to move on so we can wrap with Juan. Um, so Juan, you want to come off mute and share your share your experience and story. Hey everyone, <clears throat> my name is Juan Soberanes, and um, currently working at a company called Belvix. It's a startup for cybersecurity and artificial intelligence. Uh, I'm working as a software engineer, specifically data engineering. Um, most of the company is like about data. And the experience, my background really is pretty short. I'm not that old. I'm probably like, I graduated in 2017 and um, from high school and went to a prep school trying to get into a military academy in the Air Force. Uh, I ended up not getting in and then I applied again the next year and ended up getting into the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs. I went for a semester and completely decided that I just didn't want to do that anymore. And quickly realized also that I, I was um, slightly capping myself when I joined. Um, Mainly because at the end of the at the end of the day, once I graduated, I probably wasn't going to do cyber. They probably put me as a pilot or something. So I really wanted to continue what I wanted to do. So I ended up leaving, um, and then I ended up in Santa Cruz afterwards. Uh, I had no no experience, no job experience, no school, no education. Um, this was in 2018 at the end of the year, and I had no idea what I was going to do now. I started working as a uh, selling bread with a French bakery uh, company uh, at the Santa Cruz markets um, all through Bay Area and then applied to Carrillo College and they just I was I was going in as a computer engineer I, I really wanted to do that um, after my first semester quickly realized that a bunch of the educational classes and the way it's graded all the pressure on all these tests uh, it really it really moved me aside from wanting to continue this uh, this track, uh, mainly because one of my math courses I got a C in, and I was just like, okay, I learned everything, I did everything I could, and I still got a C at the end. So it wasn't anything on the the instructor or anything. It's just the way the system is, and um, I didn't want to continue forward knowing that I know everything, and people still tell me I don't know things. So like, I was like, okay, I can learn this on my own. I don't need anybody to tell me that. I left and then I saw that there is a cybersecurity program, CT, Career Technical Education at Career College, basically giving me a year and a half worth of education, which I wouldn't have to go through like two to three years for an engineering degree at Career College. And then I also would get work experience at the same time, certifications at the same time. And I was like, why would I waste another year and a half when I can do all three of these? So I did that. I was working as an IT internship my first year at Cabrillo College, and then that company got bought out by Google, and then um, I was just then I got accepted to work with uh, Irvin Lemus at Cabrillo College, and he was working at the as the um, cybersecurity instructor. He's he's the one that is actually in charge of all the uh, Bay Area Cyber League and all the summer camps. Bay Cyber, yeah. Um, and I'm currently actually doing YouTube videos for them on the side. Uh, he was the one that actually got me into all these security programs and started telling me more about how I can move around the field. And after that, you know, I was about to graduate. It was 2020, COVID happened and everything went online. So I was like, okay, here we go. But right before the year had started, uh, there was another person 
um, that had introduced me into next gen. And that was also including Olivia. And I had no idea what it was. I was just doing my thing, going to school before COVID. And then I got an email saying, you should apply. I was like, all right, cool, I'll apply. And I wouldn't have known that that summer, was it that summer? I think it was the, the summer after, the summer before. No, it was the summer after that I would have gotten into a, an internship at, a, at Belvix. Um, so a lot of it was having one person to lead me to the other person. And then that person leads me to a few other people. And it just kind of grows after that. Well, but yeah, now, I now I'm just working there. <laughs> well, and you're doing an awful lot too. I, you, the one you're giving back while you're at, while you're advancing on your career and uh, having babe cyber is another partner in this whole uh ecosystem here and it goes to show as christina was saying how you know everybody gets connected once you get into this in the, into this area um really want to appreciate you in there and all the knowledge you didn't mention didn't you get your bachelor's degree uh, yes, I went to Western Governors University uh, 2021. Uh, once I got my internship, I started that in April and finished it in September of the same year. And it was basically just back to back every two weeks, getting a certification, a Comte cert, Security Plus, Network Plus, A Plus, Project Plus, back to back. And then as soon as I got it, I got the job. And that was, that was really nice. Excellent. Great story. Well, I want to thank all of our panelists. I, I'm sorry I ran over. I wanted to give everybody a chance to, uh, you know, share a little extra insights here. So um, thank you again. I wish we had more time for Q&A, but we've got to wrap it up here. And I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, uh, Rolanda, to uh, wrap us up and, and tell us a little bit more about how you can uh, get engaged with cybersity. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to all of our panelists. Thank you to for everyone who attended today. Great, great, great session. If you didn't meet at least three people, I would suggest right now that you go back in through the chat and grab some names and make sure that you have at least a conversation with one or another. Um, some of the things I want to just highlight as we close, member benefits of becoming a member of Cyversity, the opportunity to have career exploration. Um, you'll be able to go through an assessment so that people can figure out what your skill level is. That doesn't mean that you should feel bad, even if you're on the lower end. But what that does is let you know where you need to start so that you can then access the resources that are available to you to continue to help you grow those skills, to help you get employed and help us to continue to diversify cybersecurity. Um, you know, there's so many different development uh, avenues for you to also lean into scholarships, cybersecurity training, mentorship programs. We have a wonderful mentor protege program. And then the, uh, the last thing, and I know you heard this from every single person on here, network, network, and network. That is the key to finding out about every single thing that's going on. So just wanted to reiterate those. Last thing, we have our annual conference coming up in October. It's going to be in Orlando this year, and it's from October 20th. 29th through the 31st. So looking for every single one of you, if you want to be able to do something that allows you to be in person with all the other chapters, all the wonderful people and members of Cyversity, come out and hear some wonderful speakers. Come see us then. Thank you for attending today. And we look forward to seeing you next month at our June meeting and our June session. Here's some uh, QR codes for you to go ahead and scan if you want to find out any additional information. Thank you so much for attending today. Thank you so much. Um, I have to drop, but I just wanted to say thank you again. So I really appreciate it. And feel free to reach out uh, to me if you would like to, or if you have any questions, but thank you, Olivia. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, everyone involved.